we know well the story of the prodigal son, but it invites us to reflect on our relationship with God the Father. How do I see God the Father? I can identify with both the elder son and also the younger son. So Jesus tells us this parable. A man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. And so the younger son is really so selfish, so self-centered. His relationship to the father doesn't mean anything to him. He lives, everything he has is from his father. But he's basically saying, I wish you were dead so that I could inherit my inheritance. And the father divided the property between them. And after a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country. I prefer to live my life without the father. I, I prefer to do my things, to use all that I have, all my gifts, everything he's given me. I want to use it for myself. I will indulge my pleasure. And so, in this distant country, he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. We can live for a while, separating ourselves, cutting ourselves off from the Father. But eventually... Things run out. Eventually, we find ourselves with a hunger. Eventually, we find ourselves with empty hands. And so, this is where he finds himself living with the pigs, desiring to eat even what they're eating, but nobody gave them any, him any. And so, he comes to his senses. Better to go back to my father's house. At least the hired workers have something to eat there. But this is a hard move to make. To basically say, I was wrong. I was wrong. And to come back and, and to ask for forgiveness. Forgive me. I've taken everything you've given me, used it selfishly for myself, and now... I have nothing. And so he, he says, here I am dying from hunger. He hires himself out, but in the end, in the end, this hunger isn't satisfied. I shall get up and go to my father. I should say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him, was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. The father was looking for the son, desiring every day for him to come back. And so he runs, embraces him, and kisses him. This is the response. This is how the father receives the prodigal son. His son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on his feet. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine, he always sees him as his son. This son of mine, this is my son. Despite what he's done, despite the decisions that he's done, this is my son. My son has come back. And this is how the father sees us. However, we've turned our back. However, we've rejected him. He always sees us as his son. He always sees us as his daughter. His intention, his desire is to give us the best. As he does with this son. Bring the finest robe and put it on him. This is the heart of the father. This is the intention of the father. This son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. How does God see me when I'm a sinner? How does God see me when I am lost in sin? 
with anger, with resentment. No, as someone who's dead, as someone who's lost, full of compassion, full of compassion. This is the life of sin. Do we think life of sin is something fantastic, joyful, of, like he thought? No, it's to enter into death. It's to be lost. And the father rightly sees that. And so, celebration begins. The older son had been out in the field. On his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what it might mean. The servant said, your brother has returned. Your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry. When he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. So just as the father went to receive the younger son, he also goes out to the elder son to plead with him. And the older son says, look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. And so this elder son is thinking exactly like the younger son. He's deceived in the same way. He didn't go out, but he thinks the same way. My happiness would be to do my own will. My happiness would be if I left you, if I did my own thing. But here, I've been obeying you, I've been serving you, and you haven't given me anything. You haven't given me anything. What have you done for me? And so, we can also live this way of thinking. I go to Mass. I do everything that God's asking me to do. What has he done for me? He hasn't done anything for me. The father says, my son, you're here with me always. Everything I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. Don't you see that everything here is yours? Everything here is for you? When you're working, you're just working for yourself. What do you mean I haven't given you anything? Everything I have is for you. This is who the Father is. But also for us. What are you talking about? Everything you have is yours. Everything I have is yours. All of this is for you. This is the heart of the Father. This is the intention of the Father. But if we see him as somehow a slave driver, and somehow to obey him is good for him, not good for us, we don't understand. We don't understand the Father either. We don't understand the heart of the Father. We don't understand the intention of the Father. And we don't know if this elder son enters the feast or not. Maybe he doesn't. Even though he was always in the house of the father, he didn't understand who his father was. And he didn't understand that his brother was dead and has come to life again, was lost and has been found. And so both sons don't get it right. Both sons don't understand. The younger son went out, the, father, the older one stayed, but neither one really understood the father. And so that's why it's important to look at the second reading. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. New things have come. With Jesus Christ, there's a new creation. With Jesus Christ, there's a new reality. Jesus Christ is the son. Jesus Christ is the one who knows what it is to be a son. Jesus Christ is the one who knows who the Father is. Jesus Christ is the Son. And he says, everything the Father has is mine. The Father is in me, and I am in the Father. He understands who the Father is. He lives out his sonship. But in Jesus Christ, we can be enter into this relationship. We can live as sons of the Father. We can live as sons and daughters of God. We can understand the heart of the Father. With the same idea, everything is for us. Our Father is God. Everything that's here is for us. His intention, His desire is the best for us. This is who the Father is. 
All of this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Through Christ, we've been reconciled with the Father. Through Christ, it's possible that we live not like the elder son, not like the younger son, but we can have a new reality. We can live as Christ lived, living as a son of God, a daughter of God. We're adopted into this relationship. We've been reconciled, which means, as it says, not counting their trespasses against them and trusting to us the message of reconciliation. For our sake he made himself, him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Because of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Because of Jesus Christ, we can be reconciled with the Father. Because of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter how we've lived. We can be reconciled. Our trespasses are forgiven. And in Jesus Christ, we can enter into a new relationship with the Father. St. Paul says, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. St. Paul recognizes that what he's doing, God is acting through him. His work, he's working for the Father, but it's more the Father working through him. This is the intimacy. This is the relationship that Paul has with the Father. It's what Jesus Christ had. My will is to do the will of the Father. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. To have this intimacy, to have this relationship, to have this confidence, knowing the love of the Father. This is who our Father is. Our Father is love. Our Father is close. Our Father has a good intention. Our Father wants the best for us. Our Father is doing everything for us. And so it's true that we can work with our Father. It's true we can work on His property. But it's everything is for us. Everything is for our good. His intention, his desire is the best. And so let us ask God to give us this grace to enter into this relationship. The church is the body of Christ. We're united with Jesus Christ, which means that we share in this relationship with the Father, seeing God as our Father. And so as we enter into this Eucharist, Jesus Christ is here giving himself to us. The Father is giving the best to us. He's giving us the best he can. Everything is for us. Let us welcome his love. Let us open our eyes to his love, his intention, his desires. And let us work with the Father, for the Father, knowing his intention is to give us the best. And so the the Father creates this feast, to enter into the feast. If we recognize who the Father is, we also enter into the feast. The Eucharist is this feast, this celebration of the Father's love for us. And it's a foretaste here in the Eucharist. And so let us enter into the feast. Let us enter with the humility, recognizing we don't deserve to be sons, but our Father loves us, embraces us, kisses us, and gives us the best.